everyone welcome to cure talks this is university of pennsylvania's covid talk series i'm priya menon and with me today is patient advocate jack ilo we are talking about stem cell therapy for covid-19 related acute respiratory distress syndrome or ards with us as a principal investigator of the study dr nimesh desai dr desai welcome to cure talks thank you for joining us today thank you thank you for having me Dr. Desai, I'm going to start about with a very basic question. What are mesenchymal stromal cells? And go on to talk about their mechanism of action in relation to COVID-19 ARDS. Oh, sure. Um, so mesenchymal stromal cells, which are also, more, I guess, more commonly known these days as mesenchymal stem cells, uh, are uh, adult stem cells. So they're uh, from uh, adult uh, tissue uh, that can basically differentiate into different types of cells. So in humans, that can these kind of cells are present in our bone marrow, uh, in our fat, actually adipose tissue, um, in the umbilical cord, uh, in utero, uh, and uh, even in amniotic fluid. Um, and these cells can be uh, cultured or grown uh, in a culture medium. Uh, and then can actually differentiate into different things uh, depending on what environment they're put into. So uh, there's studies that show that they can differentiate into bone, uh, bone cells, cartilage, muscles, uh, nerves, uh, skin, uh, and uh, even heart muscle cells potentially. So um, they are uh, self-renewing so they can grow or be multiplied uh, and they can also differentiate into different things. Um, within the context of COVID-19, uh, there is a different application for these stem cells that has been actually used in, uh, in a slightly different context uh, previously, uh, but is a potential way that we can uh, il uh, decrease the, uh, da the uh, damage that happens to the body uh, from COVID-19. Uh, in particular, uh, COVID-19 uh, in the most severe forms causes a condition known as ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. And ARDS is an inflammatory process uh, where the um, what are called alveoli, little tiny sacs inside the lungs where uh, the gas exchange happens, where the blood gets oxygen from the air uh, and releases the CO2 uh, back into the air and of how we breathe. Um, where that happens is in these tiny little uh, sacs, these elastic sacs that are inside the lung. Uh, with ARDS uh, and COVID-19 uh, being a, a cause of ARDS in this situation, uh, these sacs become filled with fluid uh, and the gas exchange doesn't happen properly anymore. Uh, and we think that that's happening because of a very strong inflammatory reaction mm -hmm. Uh, occurring because of the virus. Uh, and uh, this can actually cause the lungs to become really stiff uh, and they can actually scar uh, and, and even some permanent damage can happen to them. So um, the, the COVID-19 virus, we believe, causes a very significant inflammatory response. Uh, and this response leads to ARDS and ARDS then leads to uh, uh, lung failure, which then can lead to death. Um, one of the ways that we think we can mitigate the inflammatory process is try and attack the cause. And in the COVID-19 virus, there's emerging evidence that what is happening in the human body is that the inflammatory response is getting charged up. Uh, and we're actually having the release of all of these chemicals in the body called cytokines that cause sort of uncontrolled inflammation in the lung. And that's called a cytokine storm. And these are chemicals like the interleukin-2, interleukin-6, uh, TNF-alpha. They're all uh, chemicals. They're all things that the body secretes normally to try and uh, work through a, a inflammatory process. But in this situation, their uh, releases not as controlled uh, and it's causing uh, this damage to the lung tissue. So the idea is how do you decrease the 
lung tissue damage, the ARDS, from the cytokine storm. Uh, and the concept behind using stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells in this scenario is that they actually can decrease the production of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, they can increase the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines, things that can decrease the amount of inflammation along. Uh, and they can also uh, alter the kind of inflammatory cells that are in the lung to try and limit the damage. Um, and uh, so the idea is really that you're not attacking one particular part of the cytokine chain, but you're actually trying to reduce the entire cytokine storm uh, with a single therapy. Dr. Desai, can you talk a little bit about the objectives of the trial and what we are looking for here? So the primary objective of this trial, which is really designed to look at the sickest uh, uh, ARDS-afflicted uh, COVID-19 patients, uh, is to decrease mortality, um, to try and improve the survival of really severe, uh, critically ill uh, uh, COVID-19 ARDS patients. So the primary endpoint is actually looking at mortality at 30 days. Uh, we do have some secondary endpoints as well, looking at uh, how many days people are off of the ventilator and the survival at other time points, including 60 days and then uh, even people's functional status um, uh, months uh, and even a year after the, uh, the initial uh, treatment. You mentioned uh, severe symptoms. So how severe uh, should your symptoms be? This trial, this therapy right now is, is being uh, used in the uh, absolute sickest uh, 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 ARDS uh, COVID-19 patients. So these are patients that meet the criteria for moderate to severe ARDS uh, and uh, includes a, a high oxygen requirement, um, having to be on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. Patients that are enrolled in this study are on ventilators. Uh, and also having some biochemical evidence of a severe inflammatory process occurring. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jack, over to you. Sure. Thank you. And uh, very nice to meet you over Zoom, Dr. Zasai. Yeah, it's great meeting you. I'm a uh, myeloma patient, so mm -hmm. most of my questions are related to that. And the very first one has to do with these <clears throat> pronounced mesenchymal, which I'll call uh, M stem cells, mm -hmm. uh, appear to be, yeah. yeah, they appear to be different than the blood forming stem cells used for blood cancer patients. Um, and assuming that's true, are they, based on where you said they're located, are they harvested differently? I mean, we would go through something like apheresis or a, a worse, a bone marrow draw, but how are these MSCs obtained? Are they off the shelf, for example? Uh, so great question. Uh, so they are off the shelf. Um, so this is a very different uh, concept uh, than uh, some of the, um, some of the uh, stem cell treatments that are used for some of the hematologic uh, uh, problems that stem cells are used to treat. Uh, so these are not harvested from the patient. Um, they are a uh, cell line. They're derived from bone marrow. Um, but they're, that is done in a commercial mm -hmm. setting using pre-existing cell lines um, that are grown uh, at the facility. So they have the, it's a, a commercial product. Um, uh, I think Mesoblast is the, the, the commercial for it. Um, and there are obviously proprietary elements to process it. Um, but it is uh, primarily a, a, a it was completely off the shelf product. Do they um, need to be matched against the patient? No, they don't require any of that actually. So um, essentially what happens uh, is uh, when we uh, find an appropriate patient, we approach, uh, because in our trial, the patients can't necessarily speak for themselves. We usually be talking to a family member um, uh, to, to uh, obtain the consent. 
um, once the patient uh, is enrolled in the trial and randomized, uh, then the stem cells are uh, um, ordered and they can either be stored at our facility or they can be, you know, in. Um, uh, but they're a commercial product that gets thawed um, and then uh, reconstituted and then given to the patient. So there isn't a complex need for a stem cell lab to take, you know, an aspirate, isolate a particular cell, grow it for a few days or weeks, uh, and then give it back to the patient. Cool. Um, if this treatment is effective against ARDS, uh, can it be scaled up? So that practically it's a it's affordable and implementable on a on a broad scale. So it certainly can be scaled um, because again it's not happening at that sort of individual patient level to you know retrieve bone marrow and then grow cells, which is is pretty complicated and you can imagine couldn't happen in a large group of patients simultaneously even at one hospital um, because of the constraints of you know, what a cell, a stem cell lab could do. Um, because it's off the shelf, it, it theoretically can be scaled to actually be able to treat, uh, you know, literally thousands of patients, uh, you know, simultaneously. Um, because it doesn't require as much processing at the individual hospital level, I would assume costs are different, but as a commercial product, um, that, you know, that, that becomes a, a kind of a more complicated question. Um, you know, when you said that it's meant to reduce the cytokine storm release uh, syndrome, I uh, was thinking back to a few days ago where out of London or England, they talked about giving dex, dexamethasone mm -hmm. to do the same. And I was kind of curious, since you mentioned uh, attacking the same issue, did you have a thought as to whether those could ever be used in combination, whether one might be more effective than the other? I know it's all really early, but I'm curious whether or not that caught your attention. Oh, absolutely. It has. So, um, it, you know, it's an interesting area. We have looked at um, uh, uh, different types of steroids uh, within the context of ARDS for uh, years um, and have had very uh, uh, different differentiating results. So uh, some trials have been very positive, some have been very negative. Uh, we do think COVID-19 ARDS has elements that are generally similar to most ARDS, although there may be specific parts of the cytokine pathway that are a little bit different. So um, uh, this initial uh, data on DEX, which is not, I guess, not fully published as of today, um, but looks very promising. Um, uh, I think that, you know, these, these two therapies may be quite complementary uh, yeah. in that regard. Um, being on steroids is not an exclusion for the trial. Uh, and uh, Anecdotally, we know that many of the trial patients that have been enrolled at the different centers across the U.S. Uh, may or may not have, you know, been on steroids uh, simultaneously. So, um, I think that the data on dexamethasone, again, not having the final mm -hmm. public paper out yet, looks very promising. Um, although we, you know, have been down this road before a few times with. Uh, you know, therapies for COVID-19. So I think one, uh, we'll have to really wait to see the final data. But um, assuming that there's even a, a decent signal um, uh, that dexamethasone is helpful, uh, I would imagine that uh, we would start using it fairly routinely, um, whether patients are eligible or enrolled in this trial or not. Yeah. Can I understand more about the eligibility criteria? I, mm -hmm. I think I read that and heard you say that only patients in the hospital can enroll. In fact, these are ones that have already symptoms of ARDS, I guess, or have been at least intubated. Um, yeah, so this, these are, sick. yeah, these are sick patients with ARDS yeah. already. So um, there's uh, pretty uh, detailed criteria uh, to get in, in terms of how bad your ARDS has to be. Um, and uh, there's a criteria system called the Berlin Criteria for ARDS, which is kind of a, a well-established way of grading how bad it is, particularly for trials like this, so we can compare, you know, apples to apples and oranges to oranges, so to speak. 
Um, so um, uh, basically what we're looking at is a ratio of the blood oxygen level to the oxygen, to the amount of oxygen that we're giving the patient. Uh, and if that fulfills a certain ratio, then we know it's moderate ARDS. And if it is even worse than that, then it's severe ARDS. And if you fulfill those criteria, then you're, uh, that's the main eligibility criteria for the study, other than you obviously have to have a, a PCR that shows that you have COVID-19. Yeah. Um, and also uh, one other important element is, is the, what's called the C-reactive protein, which is a marker of, inflammatory, of inflammation uh, in the body. So uh, in general, ARDS patients with COVID-19 have very high CRP. So you have to have a high CRP to be in the trial as well. Are there exclusion criteria, such as other comorbidities or even advanced age or things like that? Right. So uh, age is not uh, an exclusion criteria at all. Um, if patients are in severe, severe end organ dysfunction already, so they're in severe kidney failure, um, they're, uh, they're in severe liver failure, or they have bacterial infections that are severe in their lungs, um, then these are patients we think probably uh, wouldn't benefit from the stem cell therapy at that point, uh, and so they're not eligible. Um, so there are uh, a few patient-related factors that would deem ineligibility, um, but generally speaking, if you have uh, severe ARDS um, without having really severe end organ dysfunction in your other organs, you should be eligible. It's a one-time infusion of these MSCs? Uh, two times, uh, two times, uh, about uh, three days apart, two single and, I, and you mentioned the control group will be getting a placebo, and uh, patients are always nervous about placebos and, and kind of wonder, is that standard of care for these types of patients? Um, and, yeah, I'll ask that question first. Okay, yeah, so... Um, so the patients, can receive, the, the patients can receive all standard of care treatments for ARDS. Yeah. And um, because we know this is such a rapidly evolving area, uh, they can also receive any um, uh, experimental approved use, emergency use treatment uh, as well. So remdesivir, for instance, uh, is, is uh, emergency use uh, you know, special approval from the FDA. So a patient can receive emergency use remdesivir and still be in the trial. Uh, similarly, things like convalescent plasma, um, yeah, receive convalescent plasma uh, and be in the trial as well, or dexamethasone. Um, but two different clinical trials at the same time, uh, obviously, because that would make it a very confusing uh, thing to try and study. Uh, so any uh, any standard of care therapies, they're eligible. Patients are always eligible for, uh, and any emergency use um, type therapies that are not part of a clinical trial, uh, patients would also be eligible for, um, and still be in the study. And if your primary objective is overall survival after 30 days, you'll be getting results fairly quickly, I presume. Uh, right. So um, the overall enrollment for the trial is about 300 patients. Uh, so one about 150 randomized to each group. Uh, the, uh, you know, it, it's hard to know as COVID-19 kind of winds its way through different parts of the country, um, you know, how quickly it will enroll. Um, but there isn't a long uh, lag time between when we finish enrollment uh, and when we'll have, uh, you know, some meaningful care. Dr. Desai, those are my questions. I really appreciate uh, the information, and I hope you're really successful. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Desai, uh, one last question. What are some of the risks associated with this trial? Uh, good question. So the um, uh, stem cell use in uh, ARDS patients is has you know it's been done in multiple smaller uh, studies, um, both with this product and other uh, commercially available um, uh, investigational stem cell products as well. 
Um, so their use in this group of patients is is not uh, is not is is newer, but is not you know there's, there's still precedent for it already. Um, what we've observed uh, in general is that because there is a little bit of fluid volume given um, when you do a stem cell infusion, it's not a large volume, but it is a, a volume which sometimes a little extra fluid when it already has a lot of fluid in their lungs can be. Um, uh, could be potentially harmful. So we help, we try to make sure that the patients are really well optimized prior to the infusion. Uh, and again, it's not a large infusion, so I think the risk of that is low, but it is something we watch for very carefully. Um, and the other one is having uh, sensitivity type reactions to the uh, either the stem cells or the components that they're um, uh, constituted in. Uh, and so as part of, uh, to, to try to prevent that, uh, we actually give the patients uh, medicine like Benadryl uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, steroid uh, beforehand just so they don't get an inflammatory reaction while the infusion is being given. Um, but other than that, it's been shown to be fairly safe and well tolerated in, uh, in, in patients with ARDS. Priya, can I ask one more question? Sure, Jack. Go ahead. Is there any chance that a patient's immune systems will wipe out these MSCs before they can do their thing? Uh, not, not acute phase like that. Um, you know, we don't expect the MSCs to, you know, carry on uh, permanently within the body of the patient, um, that they'll kind of exert their effect uh, and then eventually um, become uh, kind of absorbed by the body. But um, uh, from what we've seen in the early ARDS trials, small trials not done in COVID-19, but in other groups of patients, um, the, uh, there's been a fairly impressive change in the uh, circulating volumes of uh, circulating levels of some of the inflammatory markers. So I think the answer is it probably happens eventually, but it certainly doesn't happen immediately. Thank you. Dr. Desai, thank you for your time and the great work. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. Jack, thanks for joining. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, is a very serious complication for many patients suffering from COVID-19 and is believed to account for about 80% of the deaths in ventilated patients. Dr. Desai and team are working on mesenchymal stromal stem cell therapy for the management of COVID-19-related ARDS. Stay tuned to Ben's COVID Talk series to learn more about breakthrough research happening at Ben. Thank you and stay safe.